Hey everybody, Dustin DePirac here, columnist Jeremy Price. Uh, we're in good old, uh, I call it Millennium Falcon Assembly Hall. Uh, Corman used to call it Spaceship Assembly Hall. One way or another, it looks like, uh, it, looks like it should be fighting the Death Star, more or less. I mean, that's just, it's got that look. Uh, anyway, we hadn't been back here in a while, and uh, Indiana kind of wishes they weren't here today. Uh, rough, uh, rough loss for, for Indiana, they lose 74 to 72. Uh, on just pretty, I don't want to use the word heartbreaking play, but it's just uh, deflating, I guess, is the best way to look at it. They were they were up by 10 with, I think, about 421 to go. Uh, managed to lose that lead and lose the game on a wide-open layup off an inbounds pass. Tyler Griffey just came off the screen, went right to the basket. Uh, nobody followed him off the screen. Easy layup. Ball game. Uh, and uh, Indiana, which just got number one back on Saturday by beating... The previous number one, Michigan, comes into Illinois against a team that was two and seven in the league, coming into this game against and a, and a team that they really had, you know, they, they had control over this game and lost it. Uh, so IU will almost assuredly lose the number one ranking next week. They become, I believe, the fifth straight number one team uh, to lose uh, that week. I guess I, I think that makes sense. But uh, yeah, five, fifth straight week that we've had a number one fall. Uh, more or less, Jeremy. I mean, just what what happened? I mean, what, what did we just even witness? How did this even occur? Well, that's. Isn't that the question, really? I mean, mm. I think that was sort of the reaction of everybody from the players to the fans mm. to everybody afterwards was, mm. what in the world just happened, you know? Yeah. Three and a half minutes left. Uh, they were up by nine. Like you said, four and a half minutes, it was double mm. digits. Uh, I mean, on the road, you'd like to think you're in pretty good shape with a nine, ten-point lead with under four to play. That mm. certainly indicates you've done something halfway right, to Right, you're in control, and, you, and you've taken the crowd out of the game on some level. You, you've withstood sort of their first punch, and... When you're in control at that point, you think it's pretty much going to happen. But the bottom line is that Indiana did not put this game away when it had opportunities, and that goes mm. back from the end of the first half through the second half to mm. those final four minutes. I mean, there were opportunity after opportunity for them to do so, and they did not put Illinois away. And when you leave a team that has shooters like D.J. Richardson and Brandon Paul in a game, mm. anything can happen. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's really interesting to look at the stats on this one. Uh, Indiana shot better from the field. Uh, shot better percentage-wise from three, won the rebound battle, uh, shot a better percentage at the free throw line. Uh, the thing was, Indiana, Illinois made as many shots as them, even though Indiana shot a much better percentage. Illinois shot more, made more shots, biggest, biggest reason. Indiana turned the ball over. Uh, 14 times in this one, that's not, it's not a devastating total, but it's not a good one, and Illinois capitalized almost every single time. Tw- in every single time 28 points off of 14 turnovers and obviously they got some threes off of that so they didn't score off of every one uh it but it seemed like it. it just seemed like it and and definitely whenever indiana was in a position where they were they were ready to put put them away they started turning the ball over they got a little bit messy with that and that led again like you said to, to illinois hitting three pointers illinois does not shoot a great percentage they're about 328 i think uh, was what they were coming in the game uh and they were nine for 24 today that's 37.5 percent that's not phenomenal uh, but they keep shooting, and eventually it goes in. Eventually they, they, they hit, uh, you know, they hit a groove, and that's what they did tonight, basically, especially late. I mean, I think they had probably four, yeah, I think four in the last six minutes, I think, most of which were huge. Richardson hit back-to-back ones and then hit a, then just stuck a kind of a fall-away jumper to tie the game uh, at 70, you know, like right down the stretch. But they just managed, I mean, you know, just, just to find openings and just to get, you know, manage to get just enough space to just keep knocking down shots. Yeah, and, you know, what I wrote about tonight was kind of those missed opportunities Indiana had. You know, they mm-hmm. got it to 14 into the first half a couple of times, the last time being on the Will Sheehy dunk, on mm-hmm. which he promptly got the technical foul. Right. And that really kind of killed that momentum right there because Illinois went to the mm-hmm. other end and got four points off mm-hmm. the two technical free throws and then a basket. Yeah. Um, so, that you know, Indiana went from possibly being up 15, 16, 17, 18, maybe even at the half, mm-hmm. to a 12-point halftime lead. Right. So that killed that momentum. They got it to 14 there midway through the second half again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and actually, at that point, uh, Tom Crean elected to take Cody Zeller out of the game, put Hannah Perea in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we were Hunter sitting right got behind. got a block, but he also got beat, I think, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. Uh, we were sitting right behind the bench, and I heard Crean say, you know, Cody can't play all 40 minutes, which is definitely true. I mean, you've got to mm-hmm. pick your spots, and certainly with a 14-point lead, I'm, I'm no doubt that that felt like a comfortable time, but like you said, uh, Prey tried to help on a DJ Richardson drive, didn't get there in time. He scored. Mm-hmm. Next time down, three point play for the man Prey was guarding, yeah. and there went the momentum once again from 14 down to nine. And, and that mm-hmm. was just kind of 
the way it went all night long was every time it got to 14 and you had kind of Illinois on the brink of being out of this one, mm-hmm. somehow, some way, uh, you kind of left that door open for them to come yeah. back to Yeah, no, they did. I mean, it, what, uh, what Kareen stressed, I think, in, in the press game, uh, or press game, <laughs> post-game press conference, uh, was an issue of overhelping again. I mean, he, what, he, what he said was, I asked him, you know, what – what do you think you're not doing to put teams away? And he says, you know, in this case, he says, you know, you got to know your other team's strength. You got to know your team's strength and the other team's strength, and their strength is hitting threes, and that means you don't overhelp on drives. Basically, you you, you don't collapse. You you don't fall in the middle when somebody drives or beats their guy or or, or whatever. You, you know, you stay locked into them on the threes. You 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 when when they're in the corners, you stay there. And and I don't think all those threes were were a case of that of, of guys helping you know too much, but. Enough of them were. I mean, you just, just you know, haven't had a chance, obviously, to watch the film yet. Uh, but just seeing the shots that, uh, you know, were on the highlights just on, that ESPN had on there. Uh, there, were, there were at least a couple of those occasions where guys just sort of drifted away and ball gets out to the wing and it's DJ Richardson and he's got to look. And that's absolutely not what you want in that case, especially when you're protecting a lead. I mean, you can deal with a two-point, you know, you can deal with a layup and survive and answer it. When, when they start piling up threes, that's how you get back. Yeah, and Illinois – they're going to shoot a bunch of threes, and that's mm. fine. I mean, if you if you want to render them one-dimensional in shooting the three, that's fine. But with, mm. what makes them dangerous is when they start dribble driving, get in the lane, driving and kicking. Mm. That's when things get dangerous, mm. and that's exactly what happened in this case. And a combination of that with a couple of defensive miscommunications, a couple of switches that weren't made, yeah. uh, maybe people just not quite uh, being aware of the scouting report. Uh, Tyler Griffey got open for a couple threes. I mean, yeah, if you he hit one over his game, zone too. He hit one over his yeah. zone too, and and they they knew that. I mean, and and that, you know, the zone one I think you have to say is on scheme. In that case, I mean, he he got a look at the top of the key, uh, just you know wide open the top. I think there was one of them. I can't remember if somebody came off the screen or if he hit it over a guy or what. But he hit a couple. But the the he did hit one in between two defenders mm-hmm. up top on the zone, and it just seemed like. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I've I've obviously made a, you know defended the zone before. I mean, there's sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. You know, I don't I don't know that uh, I don't think it worked tonight. You know, I, I thought Michigan it, it worked a lot better in Michigan State than everybody thought initially because a lot of those threes that people thought were against zones were not. Uh, I don't know if that'll be the case this time. I think there was a couple there were a couple threes that they hit against the zone that helped them get back into it. Yeah, I, I think really it was know. hit and miss, but yeah. I mean the percentages are indicative of the fact that I you know. It's not Illinois. Illinois wasn't shooting the lights out against the no, zone necessarily, or whatever, one way or the other. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it yeah. Was... But, but, but Griffey got that one look that way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, basically, you know, you mentioned miscommunications. Obviously, that was what happened on the last play. Uh, basically, you know, Crean just said, and, and the other guys just said, it was just a miscommunication. Uh, there's got to be a switch there, basically, and it seemed like Watford switched and Farrell didn't. It seemed like I mean, Fer- Watford was chasing a guy down the other sideline. It seemed like I think Watford was on Griffey. Uh, and it seemed like Farrell got kind of caught up, and you know, obviously, it's a. I, I don't think he thought I should be covering a six nine guy when he's breaking the basket on an mm-hmm. inbound pass. Yeah. You know, maybe he overthought that. I don't really know. I mean, we didn't get Yogi. We got got Watford, and he just said, you know, that, that there was a miscommunication, and uh, that it was just miscommunication between he and Yogi. I guess you know, it looked like Zeller was involved in it, but I'm pretty sure if you watch it again, that he wasn't actually. Zeller was on his guy, uh, and that the, that there was a point guard screening. I, I'm not. I'm not exactly sure who made the screen, but I think it was sort of a point guard screen for Griffey, and nobody followed Griffey. It was it was essentially what happened. There's just a, a situation where you've got to switch there, and it didn't work out that way. Um, you know, they've rebounded from losses before. Now, obviously, this one's a little bit different in a way because they had just got number one back. They had just had that really big win against Michigan, and everybody was starting to talk. Not only, I mean, I got asked the question today. You know, not only does this team deserve to be number one, but is it the best number one? Is this, in fact? not one of those paper teams that, that's going to lose it as soon as it gets it, but one that's going to keep it. And, you know, there, there is, I think, th- this is deflating in some way. I mean, this is a tough team mentally, it seems like, and they should be able to come back. And I, I don't think this will kill them on Sunday against Ohio State. But I guess, what do you think? What does this do to this team going forward? Well, I think the first thing it does is it makes winning at Ohio State a lot yeah. bigger deal than it was. Mm-hmm, um, that's true. You know, games are never really must-wins until after you lose them. Mm-hmm. And so, in retrospect, all of a sudden, this game this was maybe a wasn't win. a must-win. <laughs> yeah, no one was talking about it that way before they lost no. it, but now it kind of was. And now, and now, Indiana's in a position where if they're going to win the Big Ten title, they are literally going to have to win it on the road because they've got mm. games at Ohio State, at Michigan State, at Minnesota, and at Michigan yeah. left to go. So they've got all the heavyweights on the road mm-hmm. to go. So they're going to have to 
to definitely put this one behind them and yeah. put forth better performance going yeah. forward on the road. No, obviously they've been good on the road. I think they've won, I think, five straight or whatever. And, and they beat the teams that they were supposed to beat. You know, they, they beat Purdue on the road. They beat Northwestern on the road. They beat Penn State on the road. You know, they, they won at the venues where you're supposed to be able to, uh, you know, I don't want to say they just got the easy ones, but, you know, they, they got them against teams that are a, a little bit down at the moment. Uh, and this one was, you know, a little bit more of a test, but it just still seemed like this Illinois team was reeling, that, that, that it was having a really hard time. But it, you know, Indiana knew, obviously, that they've got guys like Brandon Paul and Richardson that, that can step up and, and, and hit shots. And I don't think they came in here with any illusions that this was going to be easy. But uh, looking, when, when you really look at the ones that you got to pick up, the teams that you got to beat if you're going to win a Big Ten title, this is the sort of one you got to get. And now at this point, that there aren't a lot of easy ones on the road after this. And I don't, I don't think there is one. I'm pretty sure that the, the teams you talked about them playing on the road are all they have left on the road. Yes. So I don't know if they got to win them all, but they got to pre- come pretty close. Yeah. If they're going to win, a, if they're going to win a conference title and get a one seed and all those things. Yeah. Minimum two out of four, probably three out of four, realistically. Right. More than likely. So, and it's a really, really, really tough one on Sunday. Anyway, thanks, guys.